Save costs on equipment maintenance by doing it yourself. This video will provide step-by-step -step instructions for completing common maintenance procedures on a John Deere 35G mini excavator. Fortis Tracks was built to help your project stay on track, quickly delivering affordable replacement tracks, tires, and undercarriage parts for the earth moving industry. We made this video in collaboration with our heavy equipment partners, Tecmo HD, Ren1, and SmartCast Equipment. Here's a list of the topics we'll be covering in this video. Follow along or jump ahead to any section in the video using the time codes below. Changing the air filters on a John Deere 35G. The air filters are located in the engine bay. Open up the hood. And this air canister here has two air filters inside of it. Couple of little clips to undo. Just give it a little wiggle, cap comes off. Inside here is two air filters. One is inside of the other one. The first one, they just pop out. They're not bolted in or anything. There's one. And then inside of that, you just wiggle it, it pops out as well. That's the second one. We always double check, make sure that the filters are the same. The same length, the same diameter, the same sealing surfaces. If they go in and they don't seal up properly because they're not the same, it will cause severe engine damage. So to put them in, just line it up in the hole. Give it a little push, a little shake. That one is in. We double check that they're the same length, the same diameter, the same sealing surface here to make sure that they seal 100% and no air can get by. Any air that goes into this engine has to go through the filter elements and cannot get by anywhere. Same thing, you just slide it in. Give a little bit of a twist with a little bit of forwards pressure. That is in. In the air filter housing, you see a little bit of dust. I like to give that a little bit of a wipe out. Now on this air filter housing, it does say top with an arrow pointing up. This valve here needs to be at the bottom. So if any dirt shakes out while the engine's running, it goes through a little hole and it can escape through this valve right here. And that is how you change both air filters on a John Deere 35G. Changing the oil and filter on a John Deere 35G. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove the oil filter. Now when you remove the oil filter, a little bit of oil is going to come out. You wanna have a catch can underneath to catch any oil that may or may not hit the ground. I use a pair of filter pliers. You can grab onto the filter and just unscrew it. There's different types of pliers, there's strap wrenches, but in this case, this is the easiest tool to use. Any new filters, whether they're aftermarket or from the manufacturer, you want to double check, make sure that they are the same as the one that came off. In this case, we flip it over. We looked at the seal here is the same size. The threads look the same size and overall the same dimensions. On the seal here, you want to make sure there's a little bit of lubrication on there. Some of them are dry. This is an OEM one and there is a little bit of grease on here. If there's not, you can use a little bit of the oil where the old oil filter was on and just wipe a little bit on there. I don't normally use the tool to tighten the oil filter up. I go as tight as I can by hand. If you feel that's not quite tight enough, you can use the tool to give it a little bit more. Myself, I don't prefer to. That's the oil filter change now. Now I'm gonna go underneath and we're gonna drain the engine oil. On the bottom, sometimes there's a belly pan. You have to remove the belly pan. This one, in this case, there's not. I can see the oil pan from the bottom. Grab a socket and a ratchet. This one, in, in this case, is a 19 millimeter to pull the drain plug out. Make sure you have something to catch the oil underneath. Sometimes you have to vent to let air in. So I pull the dipstick out a little bit. You don't necessarily have to do it in this order. You can start by draining the engine oil, changing the filter, and then refilling the engine oil, or change the engine, drain the engine oil, refill the engine oil, change the oil filter, as long as you have all three, chain, or all three things done before you start the machine. So we let that drain out. While that drains out, I get my new oil ready to go. As you can see right here, this is the oil fill. You can either use little one liter jugs in a small funnel. You might be able to fit that in. In this case, I'm going to use a pump. It works a lot easier for me because I do a lot of these machines. Before you put any oil in, make sure you put the drain plug back on the bottom. Make sure you tighten the drain plug.
as you fill it, you want to periodically check that you're not going to overfill it and you know when you're getting close to the proper amount. As you can see, I'm getting closer, I'm not quite there yet, so we're going to put a little bit more in. I'm right there at the top mark. Now the oil filter is not full of oil, so the next step is to actually start the machine, let the engine pump engine oil around, fill up the oil filter, and then we'll double check it and top up as needed. Make sure your dipstick is in and all your caps are on before you start it. Now the engine is ran, we know that there's oil been pumped through the engine. The oil filter is going to be full. We'll let it settle down for a couple of seconds here and then we're going to double check the oil and top up as needed. As you can see here, we are down a little bit, so we're going to add a little bit more. As you can see, I'm bang on top of the line. We know the engine oil filter is full. There's engine, th engine oil throughout the entire engine. That is a full engine and you can clean up. And that is how you change the engine oil, engine oil filter on a John Deere 35G. Changing the fuel filter on a John Deere 35G. Fuel filter is located in the engine bay here. I have a special pair of pliers for filters. You can use water pump pliers or strap wrench pliers, any kind of pliers that, are, that you can use to loosen this fuel filter off. Fuel filter just unthreads. I usually like to put a bit of a canister underneath, a catch can underneath it, catch any fuel that may leak down like that. Anytime you're changing any filter on your machine, fuel filter included, whether it's OEM or aftermarket, you want to double check that they're going to be close to the same filter here. They're both the same length, the same diameter, the seal here is the same diameter and the threads are going to thread on. In this case, this is an OEM filter. I can see that they're exactly the same. They're the same part number. Some people fill up the fuel filters with fresh fuel before they screw it on. In this case, this machine has an electric fuel pump. So if I put it in empty, I can turn the key on to on. It'll prime itself and then it should fire up. I thread the fuel filter on and I only do these up hand tight. If you do them up with a tool any tighter, you can damage the threads or the seal causing a leak. Now that the fuel filter's on, I'll turn the key on, which will turn the electric fuel pump on and it'll pump fuel through the system. Now we have to give it a couple of seconds because the fuel filter is a decent size. The fuel pump only pumps a little bit of fuel and we have to let that fuel fill the fuel filter up and get through and push all the air out of the system. After a sufficient amount of time has passed and we think that the fuel filter is full, all the air is pushed out, we fire it up. Now sometimes when you start it, there may still be a little bit of air in the system, it may cough, it may sputter, or it may not even start. Just leave the key on on for a little while and it'll prime some more fuel through. In this case, as you saw, it started and it died, there is air in the system. Now we let the fuel pump pump a little bit more fuel. It will crank for a little bit, but you, it will start up. As you can see, we pushed the air through the fuel system, engine fired up and is running nicely. Now that we know it fires up and runs, you can shut it off. And that's how you change a fuel filter on a John Deere 35G. Changing the hydraulic oil return filter on a John Deere 35G. First thing you want to do is make sure the hydraulic tank is vented. There's always a little bit of pressure on it. So it's just like a radiator cap. You turn it, push down, turn it some more, pop it off, and that'll relieve any pressure that's in the tank. If you don't do that, hydraulic oil will come out. I leave that off right there like that. And this canister, this is your hydraulic return filter. You're going to need a 13 millimeter socket on a ratchet and you're going to undo these four bolts. Now underneath this cap there is a spring so I like to do two bolts across from each other first. 
and that spring is going to want to push up a little bit. So I hold the spring down with one hand while I undo the last two bolts. Now you can release it and it will come up just a little bit. You can pull the lid off. Underneath it is a spring. Pull the spring out. And underneath that spring is what they call a bypass valve. You want to pull that out as well. Now once those are out, I like to have a little bit of a drain pan or something to put the filter in so we're not leaking oil anywhere. The oil filter just lifts up and pulls out. I let some of the oil drain a little bit. And then I put my catch can underneath it so we're not spilling oil anywhere. Once we get the new filter, we want to check that it's the same as the old filter. Sometimes aftermarket filters have slight differences. So what we're looking for is if you see they're the same on the top and the bottom. We want to see the same length. We want to see the same diameters on the inside and the outside on both ends. This is an aftermarket filter, this is an OEM filter, and they look the same. You just drop the new filter in. There's a little pipe on the bottom that you have to do by feel, and then you'll feel the filter drop on it. Give a little push to make sure it's in. Put the bypass back in. Put the spring back on. Flip the cap over. Put it in, on, and do up your, lot, your four bolts. When you're doing up these four bolts, I like to do the second one across from the first one. It brings the cap down evenly. Make sure you have a good seal. Make sure you put the hydraulic tank cap back on. Make sure it's tight. And that is how you change the hydraulic oil return filter on a John Deere 35G. Draining the water separator and changing the screen on a John Deere 35G. We'll get a close up here and we'll see a red ring inside of here. When that ring starts to rise, it floats on top of water. That's way you know there's how much water is in this. In this case, there is no water in this water separator, but we're going to change the screen anyways and I'll show you how to drain it out. I like to use a little hose because there's no room underneath it and it'll just make a mess if you open the valve. So I get a little hose, I get myself a drain pan, I push the hose onto the drain, make sure the end is in my drain pan. I have a little valve right here. It's pointed to on right now. We're going to turn that to off. And what that does is it stops fuel from coming from, from the fuel tank in here. Now to drain water, you can leave it on and it'll push the water out. So in this case, to drain the water, you leave that on, you open the valve. By opening it, you just have to un unscrew it. As you unscrew it, it starts to open the bottom. You don't have to take it all the way out. And as you can see, fuel is draining out. Now water sinks to the bottom of fuel so that the water will drain out before fuel. If there's water in there, you wait for the water to completely drain out. After you get nice clean fuel like it is now, you can screw this valve closed again. And that's how you drain the water out of the filter. Now I'm going to change the filter inside of it, which is a little plastic screen. If I turn this off, now no fuel can come in from the fuel tank. I unscrew the valve to drain. Now, as you unscrew it, because the valve is off, no fuel is pushing through it and it won't want to drain out. So instead of pulling the whole drain out, I'll grab a pair of pliers and I'll crack this loose and it'll allow air to go in. As I unscrew this, it'll start to let air in and it'll start to drain for us. As you can see, it's starting to drain now. I wait until it's completely drained out now. Now that we've drained all the fuel out of the water separator, we can pull it apart and we can change the screen in it. Just unscrews just like any filter. And the screen on the inside pops off. Some fuel will come out, dump it out in your drain pan. I like to screw the drain back in right away. And if there's any crud on the inside, as the machine gets older, it'll get built up. You can clean that out. You can wipe it out with a rag or brake clean. You can spray it out. You want to make sure that it's nice and clean. On this machine, the water separator screen is made up of two pieces. They just clip together. 
install like so. It just clips onto, onto a little piece inside. It'll stay there and then you can thread the housing back on. I do this housing up only hand tight, make sure the drain is tight and you can open the valve back to on. There's a bleed screw right here. I have to grab a tool and we open the bleed screw to allow the fuel to flow in. The 10 millimeter socket wrench. And all you need to do is crack it open a little bit and right away you'll start seeing fuel flow in and fill the fuel bowl up. I have fuel coming out of the bleed screw now. I tighten the bleed screw back up. It's a good idea when you're done to grab a rag and just wipe any excess fuel you have. And that's how you drain the water out of and change the screen from a fuel water separator on a John Deere 35G. Changing the final drive oil on a John Deere 35G. The final drive is here. Now I've previously uh, lined up the plugs, but as you turn the tracks, these three plugs here, they'll continue to turn. So you want to line them up in a straight up and down formation. The top one is to fill, the middle one is your level check, and the bottom one is your drain. You want to have a drain pan so you can catch the oil coming out. These, this particular machine, they're uh, Allen key plugs. Sometimes there's paint buildup or a bit of dirt in there, you want to clean the dirt out. Uh, you have to tap it in with a hammer sometimes with paint or too much dirt in there. Now I use a ratchet to crack them loose. I always take the top one out first. As you can see, it's raining out. I had to put some rain gear on. When it's raining out and you're dealing with anything, uh, open gear cases, engines, oil pails, you wanna make sure that you don't get water contamination in your oil or in any of your gear cases. I always undo the top plug first, just in case there's a bit of pressure in there. It'll let the pressure out. Then I undo the middle one, just to see if oil comes out. I wanna make sure that there's oil in there that I'm changing. If there's no oil coming out of there, it'll let me know if it's level, it'll let me know if it's low, or it'll let me know if it's too high. In this case, I do have some oil coming out here which tells me that we're nicely level. There isn't too much or not enough oil in there. If there's not enough, that means it's leaked out and we have to address the leak and that causes for a mechanic to come in and repair it. Now I let the oil drain out. Once the oil is done draining, you can put the lower plug back in. Now that it's done draining, as you can see the fill plug, the fill hole here, is directly above the check level. The check level is right in the middle. If I were to put oil in here, sometimes it starts to come out here prematurely, gives me a false reading. So I usually like to fire the machine up, and if you travel it forward just a little bit, it'll bring this plug around and it won't be directly above. As you can see, the plug has moved over a little bit. So as we put oil in, it comes straight down and it won't come out the level hole. Now you can either use one liter 80, 90 containers that have a little squirt bottle that you can squeeze it in. In this case, I do this all the time. I have a pump and I buy my oil in bulk. I like to put my drain pan back underneath. So as it fills up and oil starts to come out of your level check, it has a drain pan to go into instead of on the ground. As you can see, the oil is starting to come out. I know that my level is good and I have enough oil in there. You can wipe off the check plug. And reinstall it. Now you can put the fill plug back in. And that's how you change the final drive oil on a John Deere 35G. Proper disposal of used engine fluids and filters. I'd like to go over proper disposal of oil and filters with you. Whenever you do a service on a machine, you have your old oils, hydraulic oil, uh, engine oil, gear oils. You have all your old filters, your, your uh, engine oil filters, your fuel filters, your hydraulic filters. 
please don't throw these things in the garbage. Don't dump them down the drains. These are chemicals and there is recycle facilities. Wherever you are in the world, there will be a recycle facility that you can drop these filters off at and you can dispose of this used oil properly.